Hello. I was going to just take some time and go over the problems that people might have missed on the test more frequently. Um, so let's get started. These are in no specific order. Let's look at the first one. It says, how would you restrict the domain of tangent of x to define the function the tan inverse of x? And you pretty much just want to restrict it to one period. And if you remember when we did graphs of trig functions, when we found the asymptotes, we would set it equal to negative pi over two and positive pi over two, the bx minus c. If you think about the graph of tangent, and this is obviously a sketch. <clears throat> like there was an asymptote at pi over two and an asymptote at negative pi over two. Anyway, so the answer would be A. You didn't have to do all that, but I was just showing you. All right, let's look at the next one. It says to simplify the trig expression. So, all right, you can, you know, okay, so cosecant is one over sine. I'm just gonna change everything to sine and cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. And secant is one over cosine. So, I mean, sine in the denominator, sine in the numerator, you've got one over cosine over one over cosine. Or if you want to, you can go ahead and cancel those out. So that would just be one. Moving right along. All right. Um, for this one, all they wanted you to do was graph that point. So remember, you could think of it as negative four, negative three. So the x-axis is the real axis, and the y-axis is the imaginary. So all you would have to do is go four to the left, and then down three, and boom, done. All right, let's look at this one. It wants you to find the length of the altitude. So... I'm gonna draw the altitude straight down here, and that creates a right triangle. Um, they give you this angle, so I'm gonna use sine. So the sine of 55 degrees would be equal to, now remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so if you think about this right triangle, opposite is the altitude you're looking for. Let's call it A for altitude. And the hypotenuse is five, A. <clears throat> Multiply both sides by five. That'll cancel. And you can just put that whole thing in the calculator and you get 4.0958-ish. And that's about 4.1 since I said the tenths place. And then it wants you to find the area. The area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height. So in this situation, that would be one half. The base is 16 and the height is 4.1. And put that in the calculator and you get 32.8. So the area would be 32.8 units squared and the altitude would be 4.1 units. All right, and then the last two I'm gonna go over. This one says, what is five minus five I in polar form? So let's do R first. So we know R is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared, which in this situation is five squared plus five squared, and that's 25 and 25, so that would be the square root of 50. And I can think of that as the square root of 25 times the square root of two. So that would be five times the square root of two. And just knowing that narrows my answer choices down, right? All right, so let's think about how this would look on the graph. You would go over five and down five, over five, down five, be right here. So, whoops, we're thinking about this. So it would be the tan gen of theta so it would be negative five over five. So that would just be negative one. <clears throat> and the 
tangent of what is negative one, and that would be seven pi over four in this area, which the other way you think about it, I mean, you've got this angle all the way around here if you didn't want to do the negative five over five. All right, so that would be this. And I mean, as soon as you see tangent is negative, you're doing the tangent of something negative, um, and pi over four is in quadrant one, everything's positive in quadrant one, so it had to be this one. And the last one. All right, so this is six times the cosine of negative pi over six plus i times the sine of negative pi over six. And then plug in those unit circle values. The cosine of negative pi over six is the square root of three over two plus i times the sine of negative pi over six is negative a half. Distribute the six. So the six are going to, I mean, the two are going to six three times, so that's three square root of three. Two are going to six three times, so that would be negative three i. So that's three square root of three minus three i. Let's do the other one. All right, so for this one, you would have four times the cosine of pi over three plus i times the sine of pi over three. Um, the cosine of pi over 3 is a half, and the sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. I'm going to distribute the 4. A half of 4 is 2. Again, 2 will go into 4 two times. All right, and then I'm going to multiply those things. I'm just going to fold it. So we got 3 square root of 3 minus 3i times 2 plus 2i square root of 3. So when I multiply the first two, three times the square root of three times two would just be six times the square root of three outer. Two i times three would be six i, but then the square root of three times the square root of three is three. So six i times three is 18 i. Inner negative three i times two is negative six i. Last, a negative positive is negative. Three i times two i would be six i squared, and then the square root of three i squared equals negative one, so these negatives will become positive, six square root of three, six square root of three. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put these together, 18 minus six i is 12i. Then you can put these together, and that would be 12 square root of three plus 12i. Overall, the test grades were really wonderful. I hope you guys have an amazing spring break, and I will see you on the next, next Monday.